Okay, today we're gonna to talk about pooping in a bucket. Well, maybe not a bucket, but a composting toilet. Uh, so many of you know already that we took out the traditional toilet and put in a composting toilet, a nature's head composting toilet. And we did that for a couple of reasons. One, um, it's environmentally friendly. And two, it saves a ton of water. About a third of your water in your rig generally goes to flush down uh, your number ones and number twos out of your toilet and ends up in your black tank. For us, we don't have that issue anymore. We've got uh, a vault that holds the solids and a bottle that holds the urine. No big deal. So we just kind of wanted to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly with this uh, sort of system. Uh, a lot of people ask, uh, you know, gosh, it's got to stink because you're pooping in a bucket. Well, and the answer to that is no, it doesn't. Uh, we use cocoa core, which a lot of people do. You can use sphagnum peat moss if you so choose, but we choose the cocoa core because it's easy to transport. It comes in compressed, dehydrated blocks. So it's, uh, you know, we can store quite a few of those in the rig. I want to show you the composting toilet installed. I'm going to pull it out, kind of show you the, the, the uh, remnants of the old sewage system and how I took care of that, and um, which was pretty simple. So this is our toilet, again, the nature's head. Super simple installation. It has two brackets that attach to the floor here and one, uh, one big black fastening knob that fastens it to that bracket. So pretty simple there. Simply screwed down to our floor. And underneath here, and I'll show you that in a minute, is the, uh, the large uh, three and a half inch opening that was for the old sewage system. It's still there in case you know, we sell this and someone wants to uh, put that system back in and again there's the other bracket with the fastening knob and there's the churn knob which is nice you just churn this turn it a few times after you do your business and it mixes everything up another thing you have to do when installing this is uh, connect power so this is for the 12 volt power i've got that hardwired into a 12 volt switch so that stays on all the time unless I turn the switch off, of course. And then there's the vent hose, which in our case, which in our case, I routed down through the floor and into the compartment below, which is the wet bay, and uh, through the wet bay so that it vents outside the coach. So that's it, super simple install. Removing the toilet to clean it and empty it is pretty simple. Again, a couple of screws here, these come off, one on each side, Disconnect the electrical power and the vent hose that runs outside. One thing that I typically do before taking out the entire toilet is I take out the urine bottle. And you know, urine can be stinky. And that's one of the downsides about dealing with the toilet like this is you have to empty your urine bottle. We can normally go, uh, I think this holds about two gallons, something like that. And uh, we can normally go four or five days or so before I have to empty this. So I have a spare bottle that actually came with the kit, which is awesome. And uh, so I just swap them out. And you know, when we're at a campsite, uh, either I dump it down the sewer drain that we're at, or I'll take it right into the uh, toilet and dump it into a toilet. No big deal. So I do take out the urine bottle before taking out the entire toilet because this is kind of heavy. So that's done simply by unlatching the sides, lifting up. I always put a cap on it. It kind of contains some of that urine smell. Lifts right out. And that's it. Latch up the sides. And the toilet is free. Comes right out. So I talked earlier about the existing sewage connection that I left in place and this is going right into the black tank and this is where the uh, the toilet original toilet flange was attached and uh, there was a, a pipe that came out of here and uh, of course a wax seal just like a typical toilet in the house anyway there's the test plug that I put in so far so good on that and again if the uh, next owner of this if there is one wants to put in a traditional toilet again they can certainly do that because I left everything in place to do that Except the water, they'd have to run the water back up through here and uh, connect that to the toilet, of course. Right, so I have the toilet removed from the rig. And one thing I want to talk about 
is sewage. A lot of people think that since I'm handling urine and feces, I'm still handling sewage. That's not the case. Sewage is only created when you mix the two and the bacteria combine and create the stink and the odors and stuff that, I mean, you associate with, with raw sewage. And those of us who have RV'd uh, certainly know that your black tank contains sewage. And to control the odors, you have to have chemicals and you know, clean these things out to keep the, the build up down and all this stuff. A composting toilet takes all of that out of your day. And uh, again, we go about a month before having to empty our solids tank and about uh, once a week, depending on how much water we drink and uh, fluids we drink uh, once a week on the uh, urine tank. And uh, you know, this is reality. So if you RV for any amount of time, you have to deal with this stuff in one way or another. And uh, I just chose to not have to deal with raw sewage because this stuff's nasty. And not only that, going to a RV dump and dealing with somebody's aftermath. I mean, we've done that so many times, pulled up to an RV dump and just seen the aftermath and just you go, ew, I, now I have to step into someone else's crap, literally you know, to take care of my crap. And uh, so that, that got old pretty quickly. And uh, you know, the composting toilet option is not cheap. It's about a thousand bucks for one of the units. But if you kind of add up all the costs of chemicals and RV dumps and maintenance on sewage systems, I mean, you can quickly approach that $1,000 um, in no time uh, traditional sewage system. I've kind of shot this in a couple different um, time frames, so you'll see the fact that when I talk about what's going on today versus the actual emptying of the tank and all this stuff, it's shot at two different times simply because of, of time constraints that we had. But, uh, you know, without getting too graphic, I kind of want to show you the process of, uh, you know, tearing this thing apart a little bit more. First thing you got to do is take out the liquid bottle. That's just done pretty simply. Just like that. emptying goes. Next step is just to refill with new cocoa core and reset the toilet up. Now some people do put toilet paper in the vault and we certainly did when we started out where we found that wow does that really build up quickly and there's no need to put it in the tank. You have to deal with it one way or another and I'd rather deal with it in a separate little waste paper bin um, then have to deal with changing the vault in a composting toilet that much more frequently. Guys, let's talk about your aim. You're gonna have to learn how to pee sitting down. So ladies, gone are the days where you go to use the bathroom, the seat's not down, if the seat is down, someone's peed all over it. Pretty much gone, at least from my experience. Because you gotta pee sitting down. You gotta aim up there for number one, and you aim here for number two. So Brian mentioned that we refrain from putting any toilet paper into the vault to help extend its life. We use a trash can that looks like this. It has a lid on it. It has a little step at the bottom. We keep all of our toilet paper in here. There's no odor, there's nothing to see. It's very easy to do. And then we dump this probably every other day. A little trick that we found when it comes to emptying the urine bottle, it can be quite pungent at times. So we use a little bottle of poopery. We spritz that into the toilet before dumping the urine into it. And it definitely cuts down on some of that pungent smell that you get from the urine bottle. This has only happened once to us, but it is a possibility that you can overflow the urine bottle. Make sure that you're checking that on a regular basis. 
if it does happen to overflow, there is a catch basin right in the front that the urine will spill into. The other problem can be when you open it up, you may see some urine that has leaked um, along the seal. And if that happens, then unfortunately it has to be taken apart and cleaned. But hopefully it doesn't happen to you very often. Okay, ladies, let's talk about our part in using this composting toilet. It can take some getting used to, that's for sure. First of all, the seat is crafted a little bit different than a normal toilet seat, so you actually do kind of have to move forward and back depending on what business you're getting ready to conduct. Um, you do have to separate the liquids from the solids. The, the way that the toilet is designed does not allow both to happen at one time, so that takes some getting used to. With some practice, you'll be a pro um, at it. Let's talk about something else that... Um, we have to deal with on a monthly basis. Um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But these toilets are designed to handle menstrual flow. Um, one thing that I think is important for you to know, because you are separating your liquids and your solids, some of that flow will end up in the urine bottle, some will go into the solids. Um, totally natural, of course, but it's just something to be aware of, especially if you're not the one who is changing out that urine bottle. I've done it a couple of times. That's usually Brian's job. He loves it. He adores having to empty that bottle and clean out the solids. Right, honey? Anyhow, I've done it. There he is. He's really excited about it. Well, it's not a big deal, trust me on that, um, but that's going to be in there, so just something to be aware of. Should you have diarrhea? It sucks, I understand. But these toilets are made to handle that. No worries. Let's talk about vomit. Just don't. All right, so if that happens, then you want to grab something like this, a trash can, a bag, a sink if you really have to, but that should not go into this type of toilet. Diarrhea, okay. Vomit, no. For cleaning the toilet, it's very simple because you don't have a flusher, no water is going to circulate. We use this little spray bottle. It's filled with a quarter cup of white vinegar and water. Just a couple of spritz right over the, the bowl area. Once you're finished, close the lid and you're done and ready to go. Should you have some additional matter that needs to be cleaned out, I use just disinfectant wipes. I don't toss those into the vault. I, I actually put those into the garbage can, but those work really well. Just wipe it out, clean it out, and you're ready to go. It's very easy to take care of. Then, since we're talking about embarrassing topics, if, let's just, we'll use Brian as an example. If Brian goes in, uses the bathroom, um, does number two, let's just say, and walks out, and I happen to walk in because I need a Kleenex or a towel or something. What's really wonderful about this toilet is it that the odor dissipates very, very quickly. So you can use the bathroom right after someone else. Okay, yeah. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, our talk about pooping in a bucket has concluded. <laughs> You know, these things, uh, it's part of, like I said earlier, this is part of RB life. You're dealing with them one way or another. We just choose to deal with, you know, something that isn't sewage uh, and is a whole lot more environmentally friendly. That's right. Easier on the wallet and, um, quite frankly, uh, not as offensive. Yeah. And was it as uncomfortable for you as it was for me? Yeah, you got to talk about these things. So, like I said, guys, you'll get in touch with your feminine side and learn how to sit down when you pee. Don't try it standing up. It will create a mess. Have you tried it? I haven't tried it. Um, Smart. But, yeah, it will create a mess. There's no way you're going to hit that little hole that's, you know, down in the urine collection part of the toilet. Just not going to happen. <laughs> Especially at 1 o'clock in the morning when you get up to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. Your wife will not be happy. Mm -hmm. Sit no. down when you pee. Not a big deal. That's right. It's actually a lot more comfortable. That's right. I'm more steady. So if you like this video, want to see more videos like this, give us a thumbs up. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you'd like to see. Let us know what you thought about this video as well. Hit that notification bell and you'll be informed when we release a new video. We'd love to have you subscribe and join our journey and be part of our community. Absolutely. Until then. Until then. See ya. We'll see ya from the party.